Another Sunday, another case of the scariest to start your work week. Welcome to the newest edition of the Sunday Scaries, where we have all your gore, lore, and more. Covering all the latest horror happenings, slicing open all the latest horror news, and dissecting it bit by bit, finding all those juicy innards. Pour that cup of coffee, and turn on your fright light, while we take you on a tour of terror. And we are still in high gear with all the horror news on the channel. A little bit of a slow week for us. We kind of had to... Uh, uh, dial it down a little bit, uh, pull back, and uh, we're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes, including a new splatter cast, which should be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, that one's going to be great. I'm very excited to record that. We got a lot of fun stuff going in there. Um, yeah, obviously, we have been a little tardy with our, uh, you know, last couple episodes, but hey, you know, we've had a lot of great stuff on the channel. We've had a lot of good, uh, you know, new projects that we wanted to get out. So, you know, kind of balancing it. We're still figuring it out, but I'm excited for this one. I know you guys will be too. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be a good episode, and yeah, I'm I'm thrilled. You know, it's one of those things where when screeners pop up and uh, interviews pop up, those are just opportunities uh, you can't pass up. So it's one of those things where we, you know, you got to grab them when they're out there. Uh, much like our um, collecting habit. Uh, I would oh, say. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely it's uh, when you when you see him you just gotta grab him yes we are uh little hoarders uh ourselves when it comes to the collecting of horror uh memorabilia as you can see in our backgrounds of course but NECA they have graced us with some official images this week of uh some fun items that I know we're going to be adding to our collection so to start things off we got the announcement well, I guess not the announcement but the official uh stills and release date for the latest predator joining the uh the clan that they have there with the predator from prey which of course was a movie we were big on uh definitely enjoyed that one this will be releasing in september so you know we just got to get through this summer and then we'll be able to pick her up and i am definitely excited look at this bad boy it's one of those things where you know you get those little teasers online you just can't wait to see this thing you know in the the production shots in, in its full glory here and this did not disappoint and you know it's no secret that we we absolutely love the film uh i have a handful of predators that i'm collecting and I'm, I'm uh knee deep in the predator game it, it's just tough because there are so many releases out there of different versions but i gotta say this one here uh it was great to see it on screen it this is one of the most compelling versions, I think, of a Predator out there right now. It looks so different. It's so unique than any of the other ones that we do have. So I am so excited to add this one to my collection. Absolutely. And there's the full setup. So you can see everything that he's going to come with. Um, alternate head. Uh, or I don't know if that's alternate head or removable mask. I think it's alternate head. Because even the uh, the last Predator that I picked up here, the, the Shaman Predator had an alternate head rather than a removable mask. Uh, so I think that's how they're doing it. But I like the, um, this is new, where they're doing the uh, swappable faces. Yeah. So like the mouths, I hope that they can kind of make that a permanent installment uh, for the tech there. That's pretty nice. But uh, yeah, you get all the weapons, a ton of hands, and of course the, the shield, which uh, he used in uh, some pretty epic kills i gotta say in a few shots i i loved it um definitely cannot wait to add this guy to the collection it's just wild how intricate they're getting with these things i remember you know 25 years ago going to a toy store and just you know picking up one action figure that just had one face and you know maybe one extra accessory and and that was all she wrote for it but this one i mean they're really getting so in depth with you know the the changeable pieces and just the accessories mm -hmm. that are coming along with this stuff. It is just uh, a collector's dream. Absolutely, and I do like the um, removable blades, the wrist gauntlet blades, because uh, I, I definitely think they need to do those a little differently than what they have been doing. Like one tumble off a shelf, which is going to happen if you're an out of box uh, collector like myself and Luke here. It happens from time to time. Um, you know, it unfortunately um you know it's it, it happens and you'll you'll drop them and then they'll they'll snap but i uh really enjoyed the uh the way that looks like they're going to be doing this now where you can just kind of snap them in i hope that that's the case we'll see but that's not all 
that we got from NECA here this week. So we got some really good stuff, uh, some stuff I'm very excited about. Uh, and I mean, I'm excited about Predator, obviously, but a little bit of a, a bias here, because as you guys will know, this is from my favorite horror film. We are finally getting a release date and more images of the dog from The Thing, which I am super excited to show you. And here we go. Sorry, I had to figure out why I wasn't going there. StreamYard's acting a little funky on us, but we're good. Uh, yeah, no, this is insane. The only thing I have to say, I think this is going to be pretty expensive. Yes. Because this is, uh, even um, before we get into it, Ultimate Deluxe 7-inch scale figure. When they have Deluxe, I feel like they can go up to usually about $75, $80. Uh, where they're now at about thirty-five, forty. Um, I can hope that it's only going to go that high. If it's over a hundred, oh god, I I really hope not. But it does say that it's got uh, five-panel packaging, so I don't know necessarily what that's going to look like. But hell, I'm here for it. But this thing, I mean, it's I, I gotta own it. You know, like I, I have to have it back there with my McCready. Um, and unfortunately for me, as you can see, they've got. Uh, McCready in the background there, a couple of just randos there. Um, I, I'm i going to probably end up picking up two of these if my wallet can allow it and my wife doesn't kill me uh, because, you know, I do the inbox for the thing stuff and the out of box. Um, and but Jesus, dude, this is intricate and there is so much uh, going on here. And, you know, this is something where NECA obviously knows their audience where horror fans will pay a pretty penny uh, for things like this. This is such a wonderful set piece that it's wild to me that we're actually getting this in some sort of figure form. I mean, <laughs> look at all these different versions that are, uh, you know, you can piece together. It's just, um, it's wild. I remember us trading a text conversation a couple of years ago. Um, and we were just kind of um, off the top of our heads, kind of discussing what we would like to see eventually. And, you know, the thing was a hot topic in that a text conversation. So as soon as this got announced, it was amazing that, you know, we were going to actually see something in figure form. And I mean, this, they nailed it. Uh, this is the exact thing that I would be asking for from NECA. And so uh, they did not miss on this one at all. This one, I can imagine, is going to take up a lot of shelf space as well. Yeah. Uh, but it's just going to have to so rework beautiful. some things back here. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be such a centerpiece, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Uh, cause I'm definitely going to be picking this one up as well. Uh, so it's one of, does this one have a release date? Did they say September? September. So oh, it's going to okay. also be, it's, it's going to be a tough month, brother. Yeah. It's going to be predator and this bad boy. Uh, it's up for sale on entertainment earth. I believe for pre-order. So let me, while we're, while we're talking about it there, uh, while you're going, I'm going to see if I can get a price tag on that thing. I mean, this is one that, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're, we're discussing this now. I'm going to have to start putting away a little bit at a time because I know mm -hmm. September is just going to be a wild month. Um, and, you know, this is just the start, really. I mean, we've had, you know, the McCready figures and things, but we've barely got into uh, anything with, you know, John Carpenter's the thing in terms of uh, NECA figures. There's still a lot left on the table. So I can't even imagine starting with the McCready's and uh you know the thing poster figure and now moving on to uh the dog set piece here i i can't imagine what is is going to be next from them uh but you know you know we're gonna end up collecting the entire <laughs> entire collection of the thing yeah um and it is one of those things too where it's like i um i'm really looking forward to uh what other characters we get yes i'd love to get a child's of course i'd love to get a blair you know, just other other people in there. Um, okay, so yeah, I, I've got it up here on Entertainment Earth right now, and I gotta say, you know, being somebody who collects Hasbro stuff and just seeing all the price gouging that they've been doing uh, recently, I I'm very proud to be a NECA fan because uh, it's only sixty bucks. That is very reasonable. Yes, um, I because look at that, like this, you you're getting. Um, I believe you get the dog, all of the pieces here that connect to it. Um, but I, I think maybe it's three figures, possibly. Okay, yeah. Or four. I don't know. Uh, but I guess it would make sense because they are going to be a bit smaller than your average figure. 
So it's one of those things where it's like, it seems like you're, you're going to have the dog, which is just looks like a, a standalone piece there. Maybe it has some removable bits. I don't know if the head comes off or not. Um, but like, this has got to be its own piece here. Cause I don't see holes and pegs on that. So you have that. Then you have this. Oh, look at it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see how that works now. So that's going to be everything. Okay. So it's just going to be assembly required. Pretty much. Yeah. So it looks like you might drop this back piece on top of the dog and everything. I mean, all the tentacles and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting. This is definitely going to be something that uh, I, I'm curious to see if I'm actually going to love it or not. Uh, I think I will just because it's the thing, of course, but, and I'm just happy that they're experimenting like this, but yeah, we'll have to see how this pans out. I think maybe, you know, we did a, a, a short little review for the, uh, the poster thing figure. exclusive. So the poster figure, maybe we follow up when we get our hands on these, maybe we'll have to put some pre-orders in together so we can do a quick little review of this. Uh, as well as probably the prey predator. Absolutely, I'm I'm totally down. So you're not gonna have to twist my arm. Yep. And then that's the thirty nine ninety nine price tag. Again, you go to the stores in the U S. Here, I think that it's going to be about thirty five bucks right yeah. now. Um, but like you know, uh, when you're ordering from like Entertainment Earth and stuff, it is usually a tad bit price here on certain items. So yeah, definitely happy with that though. Really excited. But let's not delay we can get into some actual horror film news for those of you who don't collect action figures. Uh, we've gushed quite enough about NECA. Uh, starting off with uh, a new film from uh, Curtis uh, David Harder, uh, who did Spiral, which I did not see, but uh, we're talking about Influencer, which uh, we just checked out the trailer. This is coming to Shutter this summer. Um, you know, Luke, I'm going to let you take this off first because I know you and I both were kind of just like, eh, on this when we picked it for news, but it has been kind of a slow news week for us. Uh, Luke, how, how do you, how are you feeling about this? And as somebody who has seen Spiral, because you saw it, right? Yes, yes, I did. All right, how, how do you feel about uh, Kurt's work uh, in general? I mean, watching Spiral, I think it was more pleasing than a lot of the installments of Saw just because they kind of melded together so much. It's hard for me to piece out which one, which installment is which after the first couple. Um, but, you know, it wasn't something that, you know, I, I watched it one time. I haven't went back and revisited it. It was just kind of like, oh, OK, well, that's not a bad film, but it's not something that is worked its way into my regular lineup at all. Uh, seeing the trailer for, uh, influencer, I mean, you know, it's topical it, it, it's something that I think a lot of people can relate to in, in terms of that type of horror. Uh, it, it's not something that really wowed me at all. It's, you know, it could be interesting. It really could go either way. Uh, it, the characters, you know, for me is not something I initially relate to at all. Uh, I'm curious to see what they're going to bring to this one. I think maybe they could build some interesting things tension i know there's kind of a narrative that they showed a lot in the trailer but i think you know shutter is smart enough to know in their um it when they're kind of marketing this type of film that they're not gonna you know show their entire hand in in a two minute trailer so i think there's gonna be a few different twists and turns in this i think they kind of gave you an inner interesting setup uh, interesting enough anyway um but we'll have to see what this uh where this lies uh, when was the uh release date for this one uh, May 26th. So, at the okay, end of so the this month. is coming up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this should be available uh, on shutter. Uh, I'm sure, you know, because we do have kind of a slower month, we might uh, get a review out for this, at least one of us. Um, but we have, you know, it's also, so. we, we, we got to hop on the other side of the pond every once in a while for shutter yeah. there. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time in the screen box pool. It's been very nice, but you know, shutter, they're still our friends. They're still out there. Uh, I definitely want to, you know, show some love, even though to me, this doesn't really pique my interest all that much. I am curious to see what is going on, I guess. Um, but it is something where it's like, if this was coming out in theaters and again, we didn't have the channel, I'd probably skip this. It just yeah. didn't really grab me with anything. Um, it's not like there's, they're showing me anything that I haven't seen before. Uh, it looks like from a concept like this, this feels very much like that, uh, fantasy island horror movie we got that's from what Blumhouse i was thinking a few years well. ago yep. um and a little little bit tiny bit 
of Infinity Pool, even though I love that movie. Um, and I think that's a much higher quality than this looks. But like just kind of the tropical, uh, you know, vacation setting uh, kind of gave me a little bit of that. But yeah, I don't know. I'm again, we'll see where we're sitting at the end of the month. We might get a review out for this one. But, you know, I don't know if I if I watch it and I absolutely love it, I'll eat my words. I'll refer to this like, exactly in the review. Yeah, I mean, we have the subscription. I try to peruse Shutter uh, as much as I can to find these Shutter originals, just because you know it's an outlet for creatives and something you're not going to see elsewhere. So you know, if I have the time, especially if this is a di digestible ninety minute film mm -hmm. or even a little less, and you know, it, it's I think it could be worth a viewing, especially just to. Uh, I think there could be something interesting if if not the entire film, maybe little grains and nooks and crannies there that maybe we could take out of this film, but. You know, it's one of those things where I love to see Screenbox original, Shutter original, anything like that, because it is an outlet for creative. So, you know, if time allows and, you know, uh, the channel's a little bit slower at the end of the month, I say why not? And we can hopefully uh, get a review out for you guys. Absolutely. I'll reach out uh, to see if I can find anybody uh, working in their PR department, see if we can maybe get on board with the, uh, the Shutter bandwagon there, and then we can... Uh, cross pollinate between both of them but yeah i've been pretty uh open about it on the twitter uh at least if you follow us on there about how i just i you know i love shutter i do and i'm not trying to sit here and pick favorites but i kind of am where i'm just like screenbox has been fucking killing it and i'm not just saying that because they've been hooking us up with screeners and they've been good to us with interviews and stuff but like they seem to this is the first month this year that they've had, uh, you know, kind of a light showing. Like, we still have a screener and a movie that we're going to be reviewing from them this month. But it is one of those things where this is the lightest month they've had. And, like, every other month they've just, they've had some pretty interesting originals, you know? Yeah. Not all of them are hits, but they've, you know, they've been keeping it consistent. Shudder, the last one I can think of was Christmas Bloody Christmas. Yeah. So, yeah, they. I think if they... Uh, could get a few more originals out there, um, which I'm not putting on Shutter itself. I know they're owned by AMC, so it's like you know maybe it's something to do with their parent company. But yeah, I think if they stepped up their game and tried to have that consistent, uh, at least one or two originals a month, uh, I think that they'd be able to compete a little harder. Yeah, and I mean, admittedly, we've been so busy with keeping up with a lot of different things. I haven't really had the chance to just sit down for an afternoon and kind of. Uh, dissect what's going on on shutter i know there's a lot of different content on there so i definitely want to uh sit down here in the in the coming weeks and, and just see what exactly is on there because i'm sure i'm missing something but whether it's shutter screen box you know it's all a win for the horror community so you know i can't hate on any horror content awesome yeah no i agree it's it is what it is and i i will be here uh to check out what shutter has even though influencer may not be the absolute uh selling it for me i i will still be there to support the boys over at shutter uh but moving on to something of course i was surprised when luke honestly was like hey let's take a look at this i know you're a fan but uh it was one of those things where it's like ah you know i i i i laid, I laid off of it a little bit because this was definitely a dylan story here but uh we did get a little bit of news with the update of the viral marketing for cloverfield 2 which, you know, obviously, big kaiju fan, big monster movie fan over here. I got to say it every time. Um, this is so cool to me that they're reviving their uh, Slusha website and everything. Their kind of viral marketing campaign for this. Because I don't know if you know about this, Luke. But that was a huge part of the first film that I didn't even know. Because I was just a kid. I went and saw this at, like, I think I was, like, maybe 12 years old when this came out. And like, I went to the theater and saw this movie twice. Of course, it's awesome. I still love it to this day. It's a lot of fun. One of the only found footage movies I can really sit down and say I absolutely adore. So like when we were talking to Robbie Banfitch about Outwaters, which is a recent found footage movie I really enjoyed. Uh, of course, this one got brought up. But yeah, the fact that we're getting a sequel and they're ramping up that viral marketing campaign again, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I really hope I can get on board this time. Yeah, um, you know, uh, for me, I lived through that viral marketing for Cloverfield. I, there was a huge anticipation for me uh, when Cloverfield came out. Not necessarily my bag. I mean, I, I think it's uh, a decent enough film. I struggle sometimes with found footage. But, you know, I, I like the big, you know, monster movies like that. I think 
for the most part, it was pretty well done. There are some parts in there that, you know, I thought maybe they could touch on a little longer, but I think maybe with uh, the viral marketing here in Cloverfield too, I really feel like maybe we're going to go into some sort of maybe contagion sort of film with, with the whole slush show thing, especially secret society kind of, you know, this company um, where, you know, they're saying, I, what is the, the slogan? You can't just have six or something like that. Um, yeah. It's highly addictive. Uh, because it's um they even say right here it's the seabed's nectar and that that's they put into it that's yeah. my selling point like i'm like <laughs> uh, i'm curious to see you know i think that one of the things is that it makes my stomach explode or something like that and i i uh, i'm very intrigued to see where where they're gonna go with this i think maybe it's gonna have a little bit of a different tone than the original cloverfield uh i think maybe they're gonna be tackling some sort of you know, different subject matter in sort of a contagion or secret society, this whole company business. Uh, so it's really got me excited, especially when I saw, uh, you know, uh, them saying Celestial was back online, which, uh, you know, just going to the website, it's something so small, but it's something so fun. Uh, I love that sort of viral marketing that they give the fans, especially being in this, you know, horror community, sci-fi community, whatever you want to call it. Um, I love that they give the fans a little extra here. Whereas, you know, Cloverfield, I think I'm middle of the road for, um, I think I, something I probably have to go back and re rewatch with a different lens. Um, 10 Cloverfield Lane. I mean, what a phenomenal film. Um, it's like, you know, I, I love the Cloverfield universe. So I'm curious to see what they're going to bring with a direct sequel to that original. Um, because there's a lot of different stories. Well, I'm forgetting the one that we weren't crazy about a couple of years ago. Um, paradox, paradox, paradox. Um, you know, regardless if you like that or not, all these films have different tones in their installments. So I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Cloverfield too. Yeah. I mean, as much as I love this original Cloverfield for being kind of that uh, Americanized Kaiju film that it is um, 10 Cloverfield lane. I mean, that movie is absolute perfection. I saw that thing like three times in theaters. Um, I remember we had just recently started working together when that had come out on Blu-ray so that was one of those ones that was a big talking point for us early on. Um, yeah, no, I mean, that, I mean, it, circling back to Prey, uh, that movie gave us Dan Trachtenberg, too. So it's one of those things where 10 Cloverfield Lane did a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Cloverfield had to walk so that 10 Cloverfield Lane could run and uh, Paradox could stumble, I guess. So, you know, that's really where we're at with it. But I'm excited for this. I definitely... Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the viral marketing. Um, I encourage you guys to, if you don't know anything about this, if you kind of miss this, um, like me, who I wasn't super into this stuff, but it sounds like Luke, you were kind of following it a little bit oh, yeah. when it was dropping, um, is to, uh, go watch, like, there's like a bunch of YouTubers who, uh, put together like a complete timeline of like all the viral marketing and how it dropped and the theories that people had and stuff. It's some very interesting shit. So I'd love to see what they do, especially now that they can tie in more social medias than just MySpace, because that was kind of the popular one at the time. Yep. Um, so it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see uh, what clever twists and things they do. And you're right. I do want to see uh, if we get a little bit more into the secret society of like Slusho and what they've done and how they did this and everything. Um, yeah. So Cloverfield 2, the more news we get, the more we'll definitely be talking about it, because, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, I'm I highly anticipating it. Um, oh, yeah. And circling back again to Dan Trachtenberg, uh, unknown at the time, um, great trajectory for him. Uh, I think the director here is fairly unknown, not a name I recognize. I looked him up, yeah. he um, He's got a couple of, like, uh, TV projects, but that's about it. Uh, he hasn't done anything uh, major film-wise, but, yeah, so this will be, like, his first real uh, dive into that. And I mean, that can go either way, but, you know, looking at it prior to any real news, any production notes, anything like that, it's great to see uh, a new a new mind getting uh, an established property like this. So I'm curious mm -hmm. to see what kind of flavor is going to be brought to Cloverfield 2. I know I'm going to be anticipating it, and we're definitely going to be covering a ton of uh, Cloverfield news for uh, the next months and probably year, year and a half to come. Yeah, and um, just checking out again because I still have it pulled up for him. Uh, looks like he's been working pretty closely with Hulu, uh, okay. and, but he did just have a movie come out for Netflix called uh, "I Came By." So, you know, he's he's into the streaming stuff, which I, I want to see this hit theaters. Um, but we'll see. I mean, hey, if the Hulu they've been doing pretty good with their uh, direct to Hulu movies, so I can't complain there. But 
why don't we hop on to our next story? Kind of a surprising one. Um, you know, I, I didn't see this coming. Luke, I did you have any idea that this was in the works? It wasn't and it was not in my um you know, my view, my line of vision at all in terms of uh us needing any other properties in the uh the Blair Witch uh universe. Yes, yeah, so we're talking uh Blair Witch project. Uh Oliver Park is reportedly directing a new installment for Lionsgate. Now, are you familiar with Oliver Park, my friend? I do not believe so. Yes, uh, neither was I. And I looked at his filmography, um, and I got to say, uh, I wasn't super impressed. Um, so, again, I don't want to hold that against anybody. Obviously, you know, everybody's got to get their start somewhere. Um, here, I'll pull them up so we can kind of go through it a little bit. But, again, somebody that I love, um, who did the last one? Uh, he did Kong vs. Godzilla. Uh, oh. the guest you're next is his name is um, Adam me. Adam Wingard Adam was, Wingard was there we go yeah no he uh obviously I love a lot of those movies uh not didn't see Death Note um did not like the recent Blair Witch mm -mm. Uh, I wasn't a super big fan um you know it's it's just one of those things where I kind of expected more which I think is it, it's a little hard for uh people to kind of be like you know they uh they didn't expect anything with this first film and then it had the whole aura of just like being what it was being a found footage movie and you know people being like is this real is this not kind of thing going on for it so it was kind of a phenomenon so like coming back to it it's difficult and i get that they tried to recapture that with the 2016 one a little bit in the sense of just like we're gonna really uh play up the horror I just don't think that they hit it in any real meaningful capacity. It really just uh, left me pretty unsatisfied, I would say. Yeah, uh, I'm in the same boat as you are. I remember that film coming out and there was um, when the newest one came out, there was uh, just a lot of um, uh, I don't know if there was praise. I remember it being shown in I can't remember where it was shown at, but it was under a different name, and then everyone freaked out when it, they knew it, it was, was called The Woods. The Woods. Was, they revealed it at Comic Con. They showed the movie, and when they came out, uh, all the posters and everything uh, went from The Woods to uh, Blair Witch. And I remember hearing that news, and there was a lot of hype around it. So, you know, not really being a huge fan of the original, I remember it, and a lot of people talking about it and living through that. A lot of people thinking it was a real film and a lot of documentaries coming out about it. And it was such a talking point uh, for probably the, la the year after its release, um, you know, of people thinking that this stuff actually happened. Um, and it was just a phenomenon. And then like, you know, kind of going into, was it 2016 that one came out? Yes. 2016. And, you know, uh, as soon as it hit theaters, uh, I went and saw it, you know, it kind of fizzled. I think it wasn't something that kept my interest or anything like that. After walking out of theater with that one, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I think I've had my fill with any uh, Blair Witch projects and, you know, not being a big found footage person in general, it was just something where I was like, hmm, okay, it's kind of there. Um, you know, and Dylan, you already talked about the outwaters. You already mentioned that. And it's like mm -hmm. one of those things where, um, I, being having the pleasure of checking out that that film and uh seeing how well done found footage uh, can be when you know you have a exceptional exceptional creative behind uh, behind it i'm curious to see what they're going to do here um you know i hope they don't miss the mark with this one because getting such a great found footage film already and then having to <laughs> to go sit through this one especially with a huge probably a, a way bigger budget a big production company behind it and then miss that mark in terms of storytelling and building that tension with, if they even do found footage, who knows where they're going to go with this one. Uh, but if you're doing found footage, again, we've already seen something so well done. Um, I would hate for this one to miss the mark. But, you know, to be honest, that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to hit. I think, like, really, um, I don't know where you would go with this. I hope that they have an intriguing idea. Um, looking at his filmography here, um, you know, he had this movie called The Offering that came out in 2022. It's a Hulu original. Um, so it, it's gotten some mixed reviews. Uh, maybe it would be worth when this one comes out going back and checking it out, even if we don't do a review on the channel, just to kind of get familiarized with him. Uh, but he did some TV work. He's got another one called uh, A Night of Horror Nightmare Radio from 2019. 
uh, looks very low budget, but you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and beat that up. But he also uh, worked on a show called Strange Events uh, from 2014 and 2015. So I don't know. Um, he doesn't have the biggest track record, so I can't sit here and say that I'm excited or anything that it, like this is happening. But you know, it's it is what it is, and I think if they're going to pursue it and it actually does get to the point where we're getting trailers and everything. Of course, we're probably going to end up seeing it because we're going to cover it for the channel. It's Blair Witch. But yeah, I'm not going to sit here and hold my breath. Now, if you were like, hey, Robbie Banfitch is doing this. The guy seems to know what he's doing with, uh, you know, um, found footage horror. I I would be a bit more anticipating or just a a, a bigger name, maybe. Um, Not saying that, you know, it has to be. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things like when Lee Cronin got, uh, you know, Evil Dead. I didn't know who he was, so it was mm-hmm. just kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever. He's got a movie. We'll see how he does. And then as things got closer and we got to see more footage, I got excited. So the same thing could happen here, you know? Yeah. We, we You never know. But again, I love Adam Wingard. That movie didn't really do it for me. So Blair Witch, it's kind of a toss-up. I heard the game is really good, and you guys have played it. You and uh, your your wife there, right? Um, We own it. We have okay. not played it. Um, okay, I know uh, I've seen it at your house a couple house. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's right. a running theme. Uh, we always buy games. Uh, it's one of those ones that uh, we've been getting, or hopefully getting around to uh, to playing, or more so her playing and me watching is usually how it goes. But, um, you know, I, I think looking at this, our minds are going to go, especially with that Outwaters review, that Robbie Banfitch would have been a, a perfect fit uh, for if you're going to do a Blair Witch sequel um you know to kind of get him on board it would have been you know a lovely kind of trajectory for him uh but you know with this you know i'm not going to write it off necessarily maybe uh this director has a unbelievable passion for blair witch who knows but uh maybe with a great creative passion behind it uh they can get this uh, franchise back on track i mean yeah it's not something that necessarily interests me but like dylan said i'm sure we'll be at the theater to check this one out whenever it does uh finally release absolutely um i'm definitely curious but trepidatious yes but uh let's move into our last story of the day now uh luke you actually uh did some due diligence over me i usually am pretty good about checking out uh 3c stories uh he had some uh pretty interesting news um about the uh you know new final destination something that i wasn't even aware of so when you brought this up i was like well let's see if we got anything We couldn't find anything directly about this, but I do trust him. Uh, He is a good source, and he has good sources. So, Luke, why don't you elaborate on the Final Destination 6 news? Yeah, so, uh, you know, my history with YouTube isn't necessarily that I subscribe and I watch a lot of things, but I was was perusing, and I did see a Final Destination logo uh, in uh, his one thumbnail of a video, uh, Three Cs, and so I ended up clicking on it just to see what kind of news it was. And he ended up getting a um, uh, uh, some news from one of his subscribers, uh, which the name escapes me, so I do apologize. But um, it is from Production Weekly, which is like a paid subscription service about different productions going on and, and just getting that recent news. It's like a big sheet, apparently. Um, it does cost money to subscribe, so unfortunately, we, you know, we have not subscribed to it, uh, especially just for one little news blurb. But from his coverage of it, and again, we're getting this completely from 3C. So, you know, it, it's us covering his news um, that he broke. But, you know, it was just something that was very compelling because we've already had some Final Destination uh, discussions when it, the news first broke that they were going to be doing something else. But uh, it looks like uh, this one is going to be, in theory, going to be called Final Destination Bloodlines. And um, the little, little synopsis, a little blurb that they had given was that our main protagonist, which appears to be female, is having these premonitions um, of a house fire that had taken place, it, assuming to be in 1960. What what is uh, discovered is that her grandmother um, had escaped this house fire and basically escaped death and started a family. So, you know, none of these people in theory should exist. Um, but uh, now this premonition that she is having is going to be her fate eventually if, you know, hijinks ensue with the final destination franchise they must escape death so overall um you know this was something where there hasn't been a lot of news a lot of coverage on the newest final destination so you know we take any grains that we can get in terms of these uh these big franchise horror uh properties here um so you know it was something initially when i had seen it um 
it's an interesting spin. I'm not entirely sure know how I feel about it. I think a lot of the times, and I think 3C mentioned this in his, um, you know, who knows about how that set piece of a house fire is going to, how's going to look on, on film. I know with all these final destinations, it always kind of lays the bare bones of this is when you talk about final destination is what's your favorite, you know, big, uh, big event at, at the very beginning, whether it's the car crash or a roller coaster, any of that stuff. So I don't know if, uh, from my perspective, if depending on how they do the house fire, is that really going to have that kind of oomph that we get from these typical final destination big set piece kills at the very beginning? Yeah, I feel like that's that's so important. You know, it's kind of like the reveal and scream. Yes. You know, like how I I am very open about how I put that on that where I'm like, yeah, uh, the reveal and scream. It, I can lose a lot of points if I'm not interested. Uh, with something like that, I would feel the same way about Final Destination. And, you know, it's one of those things where for this, um, I don't know about a house fire. I heard a lot of buzz about a potential, potentially it being a cruise ship. A couple yeah, weeks they released ago. that artwork, I think, didn't they? In... Something like that, or that was fan made or something. But it was like, yeah. that seemed really cool and fun to me to do something like that. But um, yeah, no, I I don't know, man. I, 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 a house fire, it, it was like a skyscraper. Maybe that'd be pretty interesting. I don't know if that's too close to 9-11 imagery for yeah. people in the States. I don't know. But like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like that. I don't know. But I, I feel like, because isn't um, the guy who did the Spider-Man movies, isn't he attached to John this? Watts. Yeah, I think he's John writing Watts. it and producing it. So. Yeah, so he's not directing it from what we understand. No, actually, there's a, a duo director um, on, okay. on this one. Um, one of them, I think, was responsible for Leprechaun Origins. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Um, and the other one, I think, did not have too much uh, history of probably things that we had seen. Oh, um, God damn it. So, <laughs> I'm not you know, happy I, about that, man. I don't know. With John Watts behind it, I think maybe he could get some interesting um, scenarios, hopefully. Um, so that's where I'm putting all my money uh, for this franchise. Um, I, you know, and I don't know how I feel about this because, you know, if this is the, the route we're going uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the grandmother had escaped death, you know, prior events and started a family, wasn't that kind of decided almost in Final Destination 2? I think so. I don't remember too all that well. From uh, the only thing I really remember is that opening uh, highway scene that's so yeah. iconic, and I remember the guy getting cut by the fence. Yes. Um, and but like, yeah, because like mostly I stick to the first one and the third one with the the roller coaster. Yes. Um, and then I think the is it the fourth or fifth one uh, that it starts to get real blurry after that for me, where, mm -hmm. uh, the guy, uh, gets his, uh, intestines sucked out of his ass in the pool. Yeah, um, I think that it, may be the fourth one, but I don't know. 100%. That, that was, a uh, after three, that was one that was in my brain just because of, um, that one being like one of the first ones I saw, like, as it was like in my kind of my space of just being like, Oh, this is a new final destination. This is cool. You know, right about that time that I actually started giving a shit and being like, Oh, I could watch these. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I wrote, watched uh, the first one a few years ago uh, based off your recommendation to revisit it. And that's one of those movies that I was just surprised the quality. Cause I was so much more familiar with the sequels uh, growing up. So it's one of those things where it's just like, yeah, that first film, was really something special and i'm kind of hoping they could get back to it with this yeah but i don't know man we'll, we'll just have to see yeah i did look it up uh one of the directors is credited with uh leprechaun origins uh the uh zach uh lipovsky i don't know man i i do not know that's that is not a uh i think actually yeah it, so just him uh but i'm that's not great track record. That is not a good movie. Um, I hate to say it, but like that is one that I have even considered, uh, you know, putting on for our uh, better off dead uh, uh, segments yeah. in um, Splatterthon because of that. It's just that movie really irks me in the wrong way because, you know, I'm such a big leprechaun fan and you are, too. I know you haven't seen it. It's so it's one of those things me. where it's like, oh, it's bad. It's real bad. Like, it's rough, dude. So. All right, final destination. We'll just have to wait a little bit longer, right? That's just kind of the deal. That's kind of the news this week, man. We got a, we're just not enough news there, 
but just a little bit to kind of get some talking points going. But yeah, I really got to wait and see from a lot of these projects. I'm excited for uh, Cloverfield 2 the most. I can say that. But everything else, Influencer, Blair Witch, Final Destination, well, I guess we'll just have to see. Yeah, it's one of those things where I, I feel like we're walking on eggshells more so right now with all this the horror news that we've covered here. We're just, <laughs> you know, it could go either way. We're right in the middle here. We're at a tipping point. Um, and a lot of this stuff has more so a negative track record, I would say, you know, just kind of looking at so things. Far. So it's like we got to hold out hope, hopefully. Um, regardless, we're, you know, uh, we're getting the extended uh, universe of some of these franchises, whether we wanted them or not. Um, so hopefully maybe we can get some of this back on track. I mean, we're we're riding an Evil Dead rise high. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe things are more in line with that than Halloween ends. Um I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, the The waters are murky here in the horror community, at least for this week's news. Um, but we'll have to just wait and see. Uh, I do want to say, uh, because we do record these on Fridays for the most part. Um, yeah, I know, guys. It's shocking. It's not Sunday morning. Um, but uh, as we were recording, uh, Evil Dead Rise has crossed a hundred million at the global box office. So speaking of Evil Dead Rise, good for them. That's what I like to see. Uh, this movie is killing it, making a ton of money. So I definitely think we're going to see more from the Evil Dead franchise. And uh, I hope that is the case. So so do I. I mean, it was it was great seeing that in the theater. I definitely want to go back before it is out of the theaters and contribute to. I do, too. Breaking records or, you know, anything like that. So I'm I'm very excited uh, for the outlook of Evil Dead. Um, I think it's one of the things where, at least right now, we don't necessarily have to worry about, but I think we will always be a little bit worried just because they have such a great track record, and we don't want to be... We don't want to sit in the theater and witness that track record die. Yeah, I think that, you know, we've had to say... Not to turn this into a whole Evil Dead conversation. We can save it for maybe another video, but, uh, you know, that might not be a bad idea. Maybe we'll talk about the potential future of Evil Dead here. Uh, but, you know... All in all, I'm happy it's making a hundred million. I would like more sequels, but you know, it does not have to be a yearly thing. No, I kind of like it if maybe it's a couple of years in between. Really keeps it special, keeps it nice. Yes. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be ten years, but a few years is fine. So let's not get into saw territory. No, all I ask. please God, no. All righty, but yeah, that's gonna wrap us up, guys, for the Sunday scaries. Of course, we've had a lot of fun content on the channel. I guess not a lot, but you know, we've gotten some good stuff out there with our. I spoke with uh, Julio Caesar Sedillo about the Black Demon this week, as well as Luke and I also sat down and spoke at uh, our. Uh, talked with adrian constance and jason green about their film shifted so both those interviews went up this week definitely check them out show them some love there's some good stuff there as well as any of the new releases whether that's sisu the black demon Bo is afraid or evil dead itself you can find those videos up reviews for all of them and of course i have my uh evil dead timeline explained video up as well so Lots of great channel stuff on the channel now and lots of great stuff to come. So I guess that about wraps us up. Luke, you got anything left for him? I do not. Uh, yeah, a lot of great content uh, already on the channel. And, you know, like I said, a lot of stuff behind the scenes uh, that we're cooking up uh, for you. So stay tuned. Absolutely. So until next time, guys, I am Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. <laughs>